Hi, I'm Selena, and today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of June that were classics. I do a separate classics wrap up every single month because um, I was inspired by Murphy Napier. I will leave, leave her channel linked below, but she does classics wrap ups when she reads classics, and um, I wanted to do it too because I like talking about classics in depth and I read a lot of them. They make up a good bit of my reading diet and so I wanted to share that with you. So I read two classics this month and they were both kind of modern, more modern classics. They were both written in the 20th century and they are both in a way coming of age novels but they're also very different coming of age novels and so I don't want you thinking that I'm like comparing them. Literally their only similarity is they follow a teen girl coming of age. And as we know, the whole genre of YA does that and is very diverse. So with that said, let's get into it. The first classic that I read this month is Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. This is a book about a girl named Lucy who comes from the West Indies into North America to be an au pair. I don't know how to say that word, for a white family in North America. And so it's about her coming of age as she is also an au pair and she's exploring her own self, but she's also kind of embroiled in this family's life as well. She's away from her biological family, she's away from her biological mother, and she has to deal with her very complex relationship that she has with everyone in this family that she is working in. This book is a lot about growing up in and among the consequences of colonialism. Lucy is black, she is from the West Indies, her descendants were brought over to the West Indies and, she, and so she's dealing with that and while she's in the West Indies she has had from the time that she was uh, like born to now she has had Western colonial culture um, imposed upon her and her schooling and her her way of life, everything is shaped by European colonialism. And it, this book discusses the way that things for her, her family that she's working for, the white family she's working for, things like poetry, things like art that are all a part of a Western tradition look one way to them but looks a lot like like occupation to her it's it's there's a lot about the colonialism that the ways in which culture is colonized and I, I really enjoyed that part of this book it was really it was really interesting to see Lucy dealing with these questions Lucy also has very complex relationships with the people that she is working for the family she seems to have this kind of love for the head of the family, the mother of the family, not the, the father, but the, the, the woman who is the head of the family, Mariah, I believe her name is. Lucy has this interesting relationship with where Mariah doesn't quite get Lucy and so that's really frustrating for Lucy and there's things about Mariah that Lucy cannot stand. But Lucy and Mariah do seem to have some element of a bond but it is up for debate about like how that bond, whether that bond is equal, whether that bond is completely returned, whether that bond is healthy. All those things are kind of brought up and left for you to discuss and decide with this book. And then you have other members of the family that Lucy gets along less with. You also get to deal with Lucy figuring out her sexuality. Um, which I enjoyed seeing that candidly on the page. I have seen people complain about Lucy living up to certain stereotypes about black women that are really pernicious, but I, I'm not black and so it's not really my place to speak on that. For me, I'm not sure that Lucy is seen as any more hypersexual than any other woman. I think that it's, for, for me, it's more that sexuality is kind of cut out of books and novels um and cut out of especially coming of age i'm not i can't really tell you whether this did this book did something wrong or not but i'm just just putting that that is a criticism that i've seen and you know i've also uh, i've also seen things for the other side this is very much not a plot driven book this is very much a character narrative with not really a real plot other than lucy coming of age 
um, which is a very character focused sort of journey, which is not tend does not tend to be my kind of book. Um, but I did enjoy this one and I would recommend it. I personally probably would have been more gripped if there was more of a plot, but I don't think that the book is, you know, horrendous for not having one. Also, this book is highly based off of Jamaica Kincaid's life from what I've read. Um, and so again, that, that puts everything into kind of a different perspective. For me, at least, a lot of the themes and a lot of the things that is discussed in this book, it makes me see this book kind of differently. And partially because of that, but partially because my feelings on this aren't really the kind that can be summed up in the five star scale, I'm not going to be rating this book. I mean, did I enjoy it the whole way through? Eh, I mean, I didn't hate it. I didn't, I didn't dislike it. I never was like, Ugh, like when I was reading it, like I enjoyed it, but I it, it isn't my new like favorite thing. Am I glad I read it though? Yes. And does the importance and the meaning of this go book go beyond like my five star rating? Yes. The really weird rating people's life stories. And since it's it's pretty heavily inspired by Jamaica Kincaid, that's another reason why I'm just kind of like, eh. So that's why I'm going to be leaving this unrated. It feels more like something I don't have the exact tools to rate and it feels like my opinion on this book. I mean, I told you my opinion on it and I can't sum all of that up with, you know, five star rating because I feel like, you know, I'm not the person to say whether this is like a good book or not, you know, like I enjoyed it, but that doesn't mean that like I can, I don't feel like I can like call this out for like any authenticity reasons or I, I can't even weigh in on like whether there's like problematic elements like I I can weigh in on my thoughts and weigh in on the things I've noticed which I have done but I don't feel like it's really my place to be rating it with like a kind of a trivial scale with books that I you I, I use that scale to designate books that I um you know that I like criticisms that I have and like while I don't have any criticisms I also didn't like love this book and so it's always hard. There, There's a few books like that where I'm kind of like, eh, it's really just, I didn't enjoy it fully for other reasons, but I don't think there's objectively anything wrong with it. And it's kind of like that. It's kind of like those books. And I usually just leave those books unrated or I've given them three stars if I feel like, you know, I just want to rate it based on my enjoyment. I didn't enjoy this too the absolute fullest extent, I guess. Um, but you know, I still enjoyed it. I still recommend it. Also, I read this for the Black Books Matterathon. I will link the creator in the description because I'm sorry, I'm blanking. But Lucy, I filled the prompt of read a great American read or a banned book. Lucy has been banned due to the sexual content in the book. So yeah, trigger warning for sexual content. And then the second and final classic that I read um, this month was I Capture the Castle by Dottie Smith. Okay, so I Capture the Castle. This is a, this is also kind of a coming of age story about a girl who, she's named Cassandra and she writes about her life living in poverty with her very eccentric family in this run down old crumbling castle. And this book is really about her and her family's lives and how they change once two men come and live near them, new neighbors come and those neighbors actually own the castle that they are living in. And so like, the, I know this sounds really typical, like, you know, eccentric family and two guys come and the world changes. I know it sounds like that, but believe me when I tell you this is one of the most unique books I've ever read in my life. When I say eccentric family, um, I mean that to the fullest extent of the word. This family is wild, let me tell you. And honestly, this book is one of the wildest classics I've ever read. This book reminds me of kind of a mixture of the Bronte's books. Um, I've only read one of them, but you know, I saw some Jane Eyre in this. Um, the Bronte's books, Jane Austen novels, and Little Women. <laughs> and it's also entirely unique and its own. But if you like those novels, I think you might like this one. Also, I don't know why, but I think if you like Rebecca, which is up there by Daphne du Maurier, you might like this one. They're nothing alike. They're not thrillers. Like, this is not a thriller where J Rebecca is, but like, it kind of reminds me of it. 
just with like kind of the setting and I don't know the writing style they were kind of written near the same time so yeah do with that what you will so yeah it's like those things and then it's also not like them at all and completely its own thing the writing is really accessible so I would honestly recommend this big time if you are just getting into classics the plot is pretty slow and this is kind of a 400 page book so it's a little bit of a slow book but I think that it's gripping the whole way through for me it was Cassandra's voice is really strong and the whole book is kind of really quirky especially with the characters every character is eccentric and quirky and drawn with such immaculate detail and they are also very deeply kind of morally gray, morally ambiguous characters. Cassandra is not Jane Eyre, who is very like pious and very sure of herself and very sure of, who, of her morals. And she's not like Elizabeth from Pride and Prejudice who kind of sees her family get into like this sort of eccentric, like be more eccentric people and kind of make social faux pas, but she never makes it herself. Like she's not one of those type of heroines. She's also not any of like the Marsh sisters with, you know, their like well-adjusted family and their like, like morals that are really strong and they're, they're amazing role model. Like Cassandra doesn't have any of that. Like she's an amazing character character in her own right but she's a very different sort of heroine and that's kind of why I loved her because we see a lot of women who lead classic novels who aren't they may have flaws like Elizabeth Bennet has flaws Jane Eyre has flaws but they're overall they make good decisions and they're never at risk of actually being in a scandal and if they are they get themselves out of that out of that equation right away like they do not play like that at all but Cassandra and her family and all of her friends, they all make very questionable choices and it, it's really hard for them to see their questionable choices because they're kind of so deeply in it that they don't really see what's going on. Whereas like as a reader, I'm sitting here like, oh, that wasn't a good choice. Like, oh my goodness, that was annoying. But to them, they didn't like they're in the book and they're living it so thoroughly that they're not like judging each other. Whereas like most classics, if there's scandal present, our main characters are judging them, especially with Jane Austen. Like our main characters are never involved in any of that stuff. And I cannot say the same for any of this book. <laughs> at all. Again, whereas scandal in classics is often relegated to the background and it's something that side characters get involved in but not our main cast, this book is not that. This book has the scandal right at the forefront. Our characters, including Cassandra, are right in the thick of it and they can't really separate themselves from it. They can't be detached in the way that like Elizabeth Bennet is from it. They, they're right in it and you are in it with them. You are watching all this drama kind of go down. And even when you're like, no, what choices are you making? You're still like, gripped by it and you still really like these characters because they're built up so well but you're just like what are these choices what is this plot doing i have no idea <laughs> speaking of which the plot is really unpredictable like i oh my goodness this plot was so surprising and just different and it just went in so many different directions like not like in different directions like all over the place even though it could be a little bit all over the place at times i i think that this book is so unique for classics like there's certain beats that you expect classics that have to do with like romance and coming of age to hit and this book takes those tropes and just does away with them and does its own thing i loved it also to me the kind of relationships that were formed in this book and like the nature of them was very atypical for a classic and i thought that that was really interesting everything is very messy i said in my goodreads review that everything that these characters are going through they have very they're very messy people very messy lives and kind of messy entanglements and they have like messy hearts in a way and i think that that is one of the joys of this book but it, and it also makes it it makes it very unique and very different because even when our characters in other classics are going through strife we can kind of see how they're going to come, come out in the end of this and there's generally like a set of procedures that they have to follow but this book just does not care about those things it doesn't do those things it just i mean i guess it does some of them but it it, it does not it doesn't have to do any of that and then also I loved how the moral grayness of this book wasn't black or white. Like as a reader, you get to decide who you think is right, wrong, 
what you think should have happened, etc. Whether you're happy with it, which is like with every book, but with a lot of classics, like there's definitely a place the author is taking you. Like there is certain actions that will happen where you're like oh that character has done something really bad now or whatever whereas like Dottie Smith lets these characters kind of do bad things or morally great things and behave <laughs> in not so great ways and it still lets them be at the center of this book and it lets them be mains and it, it I love that about it I don't love all the actions that go down in this book but I love that those actions didn't mean that these characters couldn't still shine and have their own book and I love that Dottie Smith didn't try to push her thoughts on the, this book and these actions and these characters onto us. We got to form those on our own. The ending of this book was so different unlike anything I read before in a classic. I, I loved it. I loved it. I was a little bit, mm, what was that? Like when I first finished it but now I'm kind of like, I, I really enjoyed this ending. It was very, very unique. In the end, this book is highly unlike anything I've ever read before in my life and I loved it. I gave it five stars. It's one of the top two things so far that I've read and finished and loved. Well, that was my classics wrap up for June. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read either of these classics down below in the comments and let me know what you're reading right now. Let me know if you're reading classics, any classics right now. Also, if you have any recommendations, um, I'm always looking for new classics. So tell me your favorites in the comments and um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.